Hello, in this video I'm going to teach you how to use a technique called reverse algebra, which makes solving certain uh, algebraic equations much faster and easier than doing it the traditional way. Um, so what is reverse algebra? Well, let's talk about the traditional way for a second here. So let's say we have the equation um, x plus 3x equals 2y minus 7. Uh, and I should also say that reverse algebra only works if the variable you're trying to solve for appears only once in the equation. So in this equation, we could use it to solve for y uh, because it appears only once in the whole equation, but we could not use it to solve for x because x appears twice. Okay, so just to make that clear, reverse algebra only works if it if your variable appears only once in the equation. But if, if that's the case, using reverse algebra is often much easier than doing traditional algebra. So we can picture y, assuming that y is the variable we want to solve for, we can picture y as being a variable uh, encapsulated in numerous um, layers of operations, um, which I'm going to represent here with uh, colors here. Let's, let's do it like this, uh, and you'll see y in a second. Okay, and then, so y is the variable we're trying to solve for, um, and then this is some expression, I'm going to use e just to represent expression, that is the other side of the equation, okay, so this is, this is e here. Um, that's the expression on the other side of the equation. In order to solve for y, we have to undo the operations that surround it. So in this case, um, Oh, well, let me explain what I mean by operations surrounding it. So the innermost operation here, the blue line, which is representing, would be the multiplying by 2, right? Because that's, that's the, the innermost first thing that's done to y. And then the outermost uh, green line would be uh, subtracting 7 here, because that's the, the, the last thing that is done to y. OK, so in order to isolate y and solve for y, we have to undo those operations uh, from the outside in. Um, First taking away, or first taking away the minus seven, which we we do by doing the inverse operation, which would be adding seven, um, and then we divide by two until we're left with just y. But in order to do any sort of operation on an equation, we have to do the exact same thing to both sides of the equation, right? Because that's the only way the equation remains true. So for each thing we do to take away the operation surrounding y, we have to do also to this e here, this, this expression, which is the other side of the equation. Okay, So let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's say we want to add 7 to both sides. That will get rid of the green circle. Okay, And we'll get rid of the minus 7. But in order to do that, we have to add 7 to this side also. Okay, So what we've effectively done is uh, added this layer of operation to the expression that was the original other side of the equation. right? Now the next thing we do is we peel away the next layer, okay? which is, um, which is the, the multiplying by 2. So to do that, we divide by 2. Okay? And dividing by 2 will give us this. Okay? But in order to do that, we have to also divide by 2 on the other side. Okay, but Let me erase this little arrow here. Um, okay, So that's how we solve for y. All right, Makes sense. Everybody knows that. But I wanted to paint, it, to paint the picture in that way, uh, get you to, to visualize those layers of operations, because I'm going to show you now how to do this using reverse algebra. And using reverse algebra, is um, it's, it's basically simple in concept and uh, makes solving some equations a lot easier. Okay, so. Let me um, have the original equation here again, okay? And uh, we'll surround y in its operations. Um, just conceptually here, basically, how you do reverse algebra is instead of uh, peeling away operations from the outside in like that, you actually, um, whoops, you actually peel them away from the inside out like this. Okay. Now, if you noticed, when we peeled them away from the outside in, what we were really doing is we were, we were working from the outside in. Uh, let me get a black pen here. We were working from the outside in on the variable we're trying to solve for, the side of the expression we're trying to solve for. And um, Sorry, that was a little unclear. We're, we're working from the outside in on the side of the equation that contains the variable we're trying to solve for. That's what I'm trying to say. So we're working from the outside in here, okay, and we're working from the inside out here, okay, right? We're 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 peeling away um, operations 
here and we're adding them here. So we're working from the inside out here, outside in here. You can actually reverse this process and work from the inside out here like this and then just work from the outside in here like this, okay? So how does this work in practice? Well, basically you you have your your y, okay? And uh, that's the variable you're trying to solve for and it's surrounded in its operations like this, okay? You um and you have your e, okay? Okay? And it's not surrounded by any operations. We're going to ignore this e for just a second here. And we're going to say, okay, we can take away these operations from the inside out here on surrounding the variable we want to solve for. Um, like the, let me just show you, that's easier than explaining. Okay, so basically in order to take away the blue line, we have to um, add a blue line here. And this is going to be the outermost operation on something. We don't know what it is, but we're, we're, we're having sort of an imaginary outermost operation here with nothing in the middle of it. It's an operation without an operand, basically, is what it is. So now we take away here, okay? Now to take away the green circle, we put the green circle inside of this blue circle, okay? Now when we're left with just the variable we wanted to solve for and, and we peeled it away from the inside out so there's nothing left but the variable we want to solve for, then we put the E inside, okay? Notice we're left now with the same result as when we worked from the outside in. We have the E surrounded by the green circle, surrounded by the blue circle, and we're left with just the Y. Now let me show you what this means mathematically when we're working with an actual equation. Okay, so we say uh, if we want to solve for y, we, we can just write down, and, and the beauty of doing it in reverse like that is you can actually solve equations in one step. And let me show you what I mean. So we write down y equals, okay, because we want to solve for y. Now we work from the inside out on this expression, okay? And we're going to be working from the outside in on this expression, but we don't actually put the e in till the very end, remember. We wrote the circle, we drew the circles first, and then we put the e in last after we were all done. And we peeled away from the inside out here on this equation, the 2y minus 7. Sorry, not equation, on that expression, the 2y minus 7, until we had y. So how do we peel away from the inside out? Well, we recognize the innermost operation on y, which is multiplying by 2. We take that away by dividing by two, okay? Or multiplying by one half. So what we do is we multiply by one half. Now, remember, when we multiply by one half, we're essentially drawing that outer circle. There's nothing in the middle of it right now because there's gonna be more circles that need to go in here. So it's essentially an operation without operands. So we're multiplying by one half, we're multiplying nothing by one half. We're not multiplying zero, we're multiplying blank space by one half, okay? So that's the outermost circle. Now, we can, we've eliminated that two, okay? Now we add seven, okay? But we don't add seven out here because that would be putting the, cir the second circle on the outside of the first circle. But remember working on from the outside in here. So we actually have to add seven in here. And again, we're adding seven without operands. We're adding seven to something, okay? Now we are, there's nothing left to do to y. There's no more operations on y. y is completely isolated. So now, remember, when y was completely isolated, we put e in the center of our circles, okay? So e being the expression that is the other side of the equation, we just write in here, like this, okay? Now that's solved for y, all right? We just solved an equation for y in one step. Now, you can verify that this is what we would get. Let me, um, let me write originally what was up here. If we were to solve this, that was a bad arrow. If we were to solve this using traditional algebra, we would add seven to both sides. So we have x plus three x plus seven, okay? Uh, and that would equal two y. Now we divide both sides by two, right? Or multiply by one half. So we have one half x plus three x plus seven equals y, okay? Um, Notice that's exactly what we got up here. This result and this result is the same thing. So you can see this method works, all right? 
So let me give you a few more examples, and I'm not I'm not going to um, I'm not going to be taking away the operations here visually as I was because that can get confusing because there's an equal sign here, and once you take away something here and don't do anything over here, it's no no longer equal technically. So uh, for my future operations, I'm going to draw uh, a big blue circle up here, um, and this will just be representing what you should be picturing in your head when you're doing uh, solving equations using reverse algebra. You don't actually have to write down the steps because often it's really easy to picture in your head the changes because the changes are always things disappearing. For example, when we took away the outer layer here, uh, the seven disappeared, and, and it's just, it's, it's pretty easy to um, picture things disappearing. But I'm, I'm gonna be showing this bubble here, this blue bubble, what you should be picturing in your head, okay? Um, but let's do another example. Let's solve uh, an equation that's a little more complex. Let's say we have uh, the equation a squared uh, plus b equals the square root of d plus 3 over x. Okay, And let's say we want to solve for the variable d. Okay, So again, reverse algebra is always a one-step process, so we just write d equals. All right. Now picturing in our head this side of the equation, Okay, so picturing this in our head now, uh, well, what's the uh, what's the innermost operation that is done on d? What's what's the very first thing that's done on d? Well, it's 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 adding three to d is is the very first thing that's done. Okay, that's the innermost operation. All right. So to do that, we have to subtract three. Now I could write a big um, something minus three like this, but then I, it's kind of hard to judge how much space I need to leave. Do I need to leave this much space? Do I need to leave a whole bunch of space? So instead, I'm going to write, um, um, or sorry, that should have been a minus 3 in that example. Um, but anyways, you get the point. It's kind of hard to judge space. So instead, I'm going to write the minus 3 out here and then plus. Okay, That's the same as something minus 3. This way, I can have as much space as I need. Um, I'm still going to put these parentheses here just for show, just so you don't get confused. Uh, but understand that if you were doing this, you could if you're good with parentheses, you could wait to put the, the closing parentheses till you know how much space you're going to use. Okay, anyways, I digress. So we subtracted three, okay? So from something. So we can eliminate this here from what we're picturing in our head. Now, the next thing that's done on D is dividing by X. So to get rid of that, we need to multiply by X, okay? Now, again, another little trick when you're doing this is you could write it like this. But as you can see, that's kind of excessive parentheses. So I'm going to actually go ahead and put the x out here like that. Okay. Now we're still working in this space in here, okay? Because that was the equivalent, remember, of writing the x like this. Um, it's just excessive parentheses when you do that. So I'm going to put the x out here. All right. Now we're still working in this space. Now, okay. Now. Um, what do we what do we want to do next? Well, the next thing that's done on D is square rooting it. So uh, we need to square it. Okay, so we have some quantity squared. Well, this quantity is still the, the quantity we're working in. So I can actually put the the square out here. Uh, we just need to be cl be clear that that's outside of the multiplied by x. Okay, um, so I'll put that little dot there. All right. Now we're left with D. We're all done peeling away the layers from the inside out. So we fill in this side of the equation. Oops, I dropped my pen. We uh, fill in this side of the equation for this blank space here. So we get a squared plus b. And uh, as you can see, I misjudged with how much space I would need for my parentheses. So I'll bring that in there like that. Um, and if you don't like having that multiplied by x out there, you could put it out front. You could have uh, b negative 3 plus x times a squared plus b uh, squared. Same deal. Um, basically, uh, but, but the equation is solved now. We just solve for d in one step, which is uh, once you get once you get good at this method, it's much, much easier than uh, trying to do it using traditional algebra. And uh, I, for the sake of time, I'm not going to go through and solve this uh, traditionally, but uh, you could if you wanted to see uh, that this does work. You could solve this equation here using traditional algebra and you would get the same result as this. Okay. Um, so um, let me do one more example. Uh, I'm actually going to use the same equation, only this time let's say we want to solve for x. And the reason I want to 
uh, do this is because sometimes people can get confused very easily if the if they come to a position where the variable they want to solve for is in the denominator and they go oh no what do I do well I'll show you what to do keep in mind that whatever operations encapsulate uh, or, or surround the variable you want to solve for you always want to do the inverse of those operations because that's what will make the operation go away well so and so of course the inverse of you know plus three was minus three and uh, that made them cancel um, and that's what allows us to take away operations well the inverse of one over x is one over x okay uh, the inverse of the reciprocal is the reciprocal uh, and it doesn't have to be one the in fact the inverse of which I'll just write this out in algebraic notation for you math nerds out there um, if f of x equals one over or anything really equals a over x then the inverse of f of x is still a over x and in fact this is true even if the denominator is multiplied by something okay so let me just uh, to further to really demonstrate this point I'm actually gonna change this equation here uh, we're gonna solve this equation now new equation I wasn't doing any operations there this is a new equation okay and now let's solve for X okay so we write down X equals uh, we're gonna be picturing in our head this side of the equation t plus 3 over 2x okay like this now let's solve for X well I just showed you the inverse of something over something times X is the exact same thing something over something times x so if we have uh, say d plus 3 over 2x the inverse of that is exactly this okay so the inverse what what we do to this is um is we just write down here in wherever we're working here the inverse so we start out by writing d plus 3 equal over 2 times now this is the something we're working with we don't actually write X of course because uh, we're doing the inverse operation here um, and that'll eliminate it down to here okay alright so up here we just have the square root of X now um, in here is where we're working this the space here okay everything we do is going to be inside of here because remember we're always doing the operations outside in when we're writing out the answer so we did this operation now we're gonna put the next operation in here so the next thing we need to do is the inverse of square root which is square and um, normally you would need to maybe do this but uh, in this particular case you can see that's just again excessive parentheses because we already have a pair of parentheses here so I can put the square out here alright that gets rid of this and now once again we're down to just X so we plug in uh, the other side of the equation a squared plus B like that and so we just solve this equation for X okay I know it's probably seeming really confusing right now but trust me just a little bit of practice and you'll very quickly soon see that this method of solving equations using reverse algebra is much faster and simpler especially for really big complex equations uh, it's much faster and simpler than trying to use reverse algebra okay uh, unfortunately that's all I have time for uh, I may make another video sometime in the future if you guys leave comments asking me to uh, just with more examples uh, with difficult situations and stuff like that uh, that's all I have time for in this video but uh, I hope you guys enjoy it I hope you guys find use for it and um, happy equation solvings see you next time